The energy crisis is not a crisis of supply. It's a hostage crisis. It only takes five minutes to solve. Here goes. Here's a really simple statement of the problem. We need energy and energy costs are unsustainably high. Okay, so what even is energy? Energy is just the ability to move stuff and heat stuff. But people think energy is scarce and therefore expensive, but a lot of things in nature move and get hot without our help. So scarcity is not the problem. The energy crisis is actually caused by the outrageous costs of energy charged by the people who currently provide it because they have a monopoly and use it to extort us. They keep that monopoly by only offering us energy made from limited sources they can control and therefore set the price of. They are companies which have been designed from the ground up to provide energy through extortion. The cost of our entire way of living is tied to the cost of the ways we find energy to move stuff and heat stuff. We believe that this cost is high because there is not enough energy to move and heat all the stuff we need to, but in in reality, this is because the people who control it only make just enough using expensive and limited sources to keep the prices at a premium. The lie in this whole system is that energy is limited and expensive when it's actually unlimited and free. There is energy everywhere around us. Anywhere nature moves stuff or heats stuff, there is a supply of free energy that can be collected. The way we think of energy now is that we search for it, extract it, and then pay for the limited supply. The extortionists want you to believe that this expensive model is the only way to think of it. Rather, we could actually change to thinking of it as something we can collect for free we do one thing, change the way we turn a crank. This is a generator. You turn this crank here and electricity to move stuff and heat stuff comes out the other end. So what do we use right now to turn the crank? Right now, we use natural gas, coal, gasoline, diesel, and nuclear power to move stuff and heat stuff. The plant that powers your home has several generators. If it's a coal plant, they burn coal to boil water to make steam to turn a turbine which turns the crank on a generator. If they use natural gas, they burn the gas to boil water to turn a turbine which then turns the crank on a generator. If they use nuclear power to take uranium, put it in a special thing called a reactor and generate heat with it which then boils water and uses that steam to turn a turbine to turn the crank on a generator. You see where I'm going with this. We can take control of the destiny of the whole world by answering one question. How many more ways are there to turn a crank? And nature provides us with unlimited answers to this question. Rather than thinking of energy only as fuels that need to be dug up, moved, and burned to turn a crank, we need to think of energy as an unlimited resource that's already there and just needs to be collected. It's everywhere. Nature provides more than we could ever use. Everywhere in nature that something is moving or being heated, we can use that to turn a crank. We turn a crank with a wind turbine. It's free energy and works wherever there is wind, and there is always wind somewhere. We turn a crank with falling water at a hydro plant and it's free, and runs anytime water is falling, and it's always falling. We collect the heat of the sun with mirrors in a desert, and you guessed it, it boils water to make steam to turn a turbine and turn the crank on a generator. And the sun is always shining somewhere. Extortion energy companies will tell you the technology isn't there yet to collect energy, but do we have propellers, mirrors, and turbines? Yes. Is there wind, sun, and falling water? Yes. Do we have brains which can come up with new and different ways to turn a crank using the energy already provided for free? Yes, yes, yes! We don't even need to build a new delivery system. The grid is already in place. It's like changing what comes out of a pipe at one end by changing what you put in it. So why don't we do this? It seems like common sense. We don't because the people who dig it up, move it, and sell it aren't interested in that. They resist this change with their wealth, media connections, and political power. This seems like an obstacle we can't overcome. I mean, it's not like we can just boycott them, right? Wrong. We can boycott them. We can demand they build collectors instead of extortion machines by insisting on only buying electrical supply from companies that use collectors. These companies exist already. Did you know that you can pick your supplier? Imagine how fast we could do this if we only bought electricity from non-extortion energy. The more people who do this and send their money to companies that do the right thing, the more of these collectors we will see get built. The free market can take care of it, but even if they won't, even if they use their wealth to resist and drag their feet to continue keeping us hostage, their extortion scheme is living on borrowed time. The government can be forced to build them. We can vote for people who will make them happen. It would create trillions of dollars in value every year by simply eliminating the need to pay for limited commodity fuels you have to dig up and move and burn. Imagine if all the plants where we use oil, coal, and uranium to turn a crank to make electricity now were changed to ones that didn't need oil, coal, or uranium to turn the crank anymore. But what about the cost of this change, you ask? Where does the money come from? Well, it would have to come from you, but that's not strange because it comes from you already. You already pay these extortion companies for their supply and to dig, siphon, or pump the energy out of the ground and transport it to you. Then you pay them to maintain the network they use to provide it for you, and then you pay tax on all of that. 
Extortion energy companies are making unbelievable sums of money making us pay for the dangerous extraction, infrastructure, and delivery of limited commodities to provide something which is actually unlimited. Essentially, they sell us bottled water at a premium in the middle of a crystal clear lake and charge us for the water, the bottle, and the delivery. We are all hostages to a lie, but the truth can set us free. We must overthrow extortion energy with unified economic and political action and change our idea of energy as something that is limited and costly to something that is unlimited and free. We can be free of them by simply choosing to be so. We can choose to destroy the extortion machine. Freedom is as simple as finding new ways to turn a crank.